I'm Claire Edgson. I'm the European Solution Architect Lead for Power Apps for Avenard. I'm also one of Microsoft's Fast Track recognised architects for Power Apps. I've got 30 years experience in IT with more than 20 years with Microsoft. My background and passion is all about how the data works and how does that work for our users. I've got security and integration experience on many different platforms and systems. But what I love about Power Platform is the flexibility it gives businesses to build good agile solutions to solve real business needs. Hi, my name is Chessie Navaranjan and I am a Business Applications MVP. I work at Avanard as a Power Platform Solutions Architect and I am very passionate about the Power Platform. I have my own YouTube channel called Jesse's Power Channel, so do check that out, where I post weekly videos on all elements of the Power Platform, Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, and you know, everything that there is. So I really hope you enjoy this talk today. Thank you. Welcome to Microsoft Tech Days, where myself and Claire Edgson will be presenting on how the Power Platform scales. Just to start and have a think about what we're kind of speaking about today, um, I'm sure you've heard of the Power Platform by now, having been in a number of engaging sessions. Um, but just to recap, we have the kind of four pillars of the different tools that we can use um, within the Power Platform, so Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. We have data connectors, portals, the AI builder, and the common data service. Now, this entire talk that we're going to be giving today is all about, right, so you've got a couple of these in your organization now. Maybe you've got a Power BI report, maybe you've got a couple of apps. How do we now scale this? How do we now get this to a point where we're building thousands of reports and we're reaching thousands of users? And on the bottom right there is a picture of the uh, Plow Platform COE Starter Kit Summary. Now, this is a really great place to start. So I wanted to put that there as a, a quick thing that you can have a look at in order to see. Now, this is a set of tools that you can download and start using within your organization. And it's free to download. Of course, you won't be able to use all the different components depending on the licensing that you have within your organization. The core principles that we'll be speaking about today include know when to use the Power Platform, design and implement your governance and security model, solving the right problems, enabling your citizen developers, and tracking value creation over time. Now, of course, this will make a lot more sense as we go into the actual talk. Power apps and automations are a lot like seeds. We need to understand what they need in order to help them grow. We need to understand the purpose of what they're meant to do. The audience, is it internal or external? What kind of number of users are we expecting? What volume of data are we expecting to use? Then we need to look at the data sources. What are we going to read and write from? Is it going to be SharePoint and Office 365? Is it going to be Dataverse? Will it be SQL Azure? Or other databases? Or a combination of? What kind of licensing are we going to be able to use? Office 365 licensing? Dynamics licensing, Power Apps or Power Automate licensing. Once we understand these things around our apps and automations, we now have to care for them to help them thrive. One of the ways to do this is to create strategic frameworks. One, around the environments. When is it safe to be in the default environment? When can we use shared environments? When do we have to have highly controlled environments? We can work with IT and security to look at security and governance that match what the business already has in place. We can look at data loss protection. Some will already be in place from Office 365. You may have other things in place. We need to match these with the environments based on the data they have, so all the data stays safe where it's meant to be. The final thing we can do that really helps our apps thrive is to create a centre of excellence team. These are the heart of all things Power Platform. They're our go-between. 
between IT, security, the citizen developers, the pro developers. There are gardeners, if you like. They care for and thin and replant our apps as needed. They are the ones that will keep control and make sure everything continues to grow the way we intended. Designing and implementing your governance model. There are four pillars here which I'd like to talk to you about. The first being the architecture. So this is all around which are the tools that you are using within your actual solution. So with the Power Apps and the Power BI, we need to make sure that we're using the right solutions as we scale and become bigger and bigger. So, you know, this refers to, you know, if you're doing a reporting solution, make sure you use Power BI. If you're doing more of an input output, then maybe Power Apps is more suited for that. And also it's about how these different constructs fit together and the performance implications beneath this as we get bigger and bigger within our organization. The second pillar here is security. Now with security, we really need to think about who's going to be using our, our solutions. Are there different hierarchical roles that we need to consider? Are there admin roles that we need to consider? All of these are going to really help us scale and grow bigger and bigger within our organization. Perhaps we need different environments. Do we need a test, a prod, and a development environment? These are all very, very important. Thirdly, we have an alerting and an action pillar here, which is all about how do we define this governance model between the different groups of users that we may have in our organization. And here, we're not just thinking about the security profiles, but we're thinking about are there IT services? Do we have citizen developers? Do we have compliance and governance and policy? users that are very uh, uh, you know, interested in our, in our organization. And what environments do we want? So do we want an environment that a lot of developers can get into? Do we want to silo those into sandbox environments and production environments? These are all going to be very, very useful points as we scale and grow our platform. The fourth pillar here is about monitoring. So now that we've got all these applications and we've got the security in place and we're using the right tools and we're now making sure that the IT are talking to the compliance and etc. We need to ensure that all the apps that are being developed are being monitored and captured. A, for how many users are actually using them. B, are there um, applications that are not being used. And also C, actually that security flow. So what I mean by that is where is the data flowing? Is the data going outside of the organization? Is the data... Uh, is there one version of the truth, for example? So these are all really important considerations as we design and implement our governance model. Another part of a successful scaled solution is about solving the right problems. Now this picture here is a, a tool that is available called the Innovation Backlog in the Center of Excellence Kit. Now this is a tool that we can use to essentially make sure that we're solving the right problems, as it says there. On the left-hand side, we see a summary of different ideas that have been submitted. And on there, we can see the amount of time that can be saved per month and the amount of money that can be saved per month. Now, this is just one idea in, in, um, in how you can actually capture these ideas. Of course, you can use forms or use different methods of data capture to actually just save these different ideas. And the reason that this is important is we want to make sure that within the organization, as we grow bigger and bigger, we know that we are spending the time on those situations and problems that are actually going to save us the most time and money. And that way, our developers and our citizen developers and all, all the users within our organization are actually going to be using their time in the best possible way. So as we grow bigger and bigger, I urge you to think about how we can solve the right problems for your organization. Now, you may have heard of the word cottage industries. Now, this is when many users are actually working on the same problem in different areas. Now, by using a tool like this, we can ensure that there is one version of the truth and one application is actually being developed to meet as many problems as possible. Every manager or team wants to innovate, make things better and faster. Power Platform is a great way for departments to create agile solutions to solve real business problems. But how do we let them do it safely and in a controlled way? Remember the seeds? 
We create those safe frameworks that mean teams can innovate in brilliant ways, allowing for rapid growth and transformation while still working with IT and security without slowing us down. Our citizens and pro developers need good groundings. They need training that's accessible and bite-sized. They need a shared knowledge base they both write to. They need shared communications with IT and security on what's changing and what's updated. Champions, we all want a hero. We want enthusiasts, not just in citizen teams, but in the pro development team, IT and security to champion the platform, good practices, what we're doing for the business and what a great community that's been built within the business. Our mentors are team members that are there to guide and support others. They may be from other departments, but this is one of the best ways to bring in new people to the platform. Gamification. We all love a little competition. Points mean prizes. Let's have some fun. What would you give points for? We could give points for apps that are used. Automations that help other people. Give points for learning, points for exams, point for shared projects, point for good information shared with others, point for helping people, point for knowledge. Whatever it is you do for your people when your points mean prizes, never forget to give them kudos for the great ideas, the hard work, and most importantly, the business value they bring to you. Now, don't forget our center of excellence team we talked about before. They're typically made up of IT, pro developers and citizen developers. They're our heart of the business, remember? What they do is they give control to the environments. They help guide the mentors and the champions on what the best practices are going to be. And they work hand in hand with IT and security. Whatever you do with your citizens and your pros, remember to give kudos. We all love a pat on the back. We also want to make sure that we track the value creation over time. Now, what does this mean? This is also a snippet from the Centre of Excellence kit, and you can see some of the tiles here, which give us an idea about what this means. So now that we've got all these you know, amazing tools in place and we're scaling our platform, we need to make sure we're monitoring and looking at everything and looking at the actual apps that are being created, the reports that are being created, and making sure that they're still fit for purpose. Perhaps there are developers within our organization that we don't know about. Now, this kind of thing would actually make us be able to look at those users. So we can now see, for example, the number of apps created by user. And this is going to help us identify those users that we may not know about, that may be creating apps in silo. And this is a great tool for that. So this is actually a Power BI report. So you can see different um, kind of sections that you can go into. So for example, connectors, connections. So we can actually see if there's a data source that we have within our organization where app makers are actually going in and utilizing that connection. And for example, if we see that a certain data set is being used more often than um, some of the other ones and we need to make sure that the data integrity and is that data still fit for purpose and is it the right um, data that should be used within that application or report etc and perhaps we want to take that data and use it elsewhere it's about making sure that as kind of environment admins and in that center of excellence we know exactly what is going on real life experience in doing this in companies both large and small is it takes time to grow and scale. But like any good opportunity, it takes some upfront planning to make it work well. The things you need to put the effort into right at the start are working with your key stakeholders in the business. Work out the environments, the security, the data loss prevention, the application lifecycle management frameworks. These are going to be your bumpers, your nice safety blankets that keep your developers safe. What this gives the developers is a huge advantage to be able to be innovative, be brilliant, without having to keep stopping and deciding if this fits a process or not. Once you know what you want to do, automate as much as possible so people aren't the bottleneck. 
And lastly, the biggest successes in companies around the world are the ones that have recognised their people for their ideas and their work. A happy community makes great things come to life.